Yeah, well, so let's talk about kind of con conventional thinking around this topic of detoxification more broadly and some of the kind of detox protocols that are out there. Uh, I'm curious what you think of them and where you think they might well, be. Wait a, sec wait a second, what do you think of as conventional? <laughs> Uh, well, not conventional medicine. So okay. I'm talking about like sort of, I guess, I, yeah, maybe I shouldn't use that word conventional, but typical thinking within some of the holistic health functional medicines. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I, I think that's really hard to pin down because there's, there's, so, there's so much that probably has no merit and there's so much that almost certainly has merit, right? So, you know, on the one hand, like, there's no evidence that if you take a boatloads of olive oil and lemon juice, and then you have things that look like rocks coming out of your poop, that you detoxed anything from your liver. Like you didn't clean out your liver. Probably that that olive oil like congealed into something that looked like something bad to you. <laughs> That's probably what happened. Um, on the other hand, if you go to a vitamin shop and you look at like detox supplements, you go on Amazon and you search for detox supplements probably most of the stuff there at least has merit in principle. Mm -hmm. um, there might, you know, you might have questions on whether it's the best formulation, but most of those things have things known and shown to be um, hormetic stressors that upregulate the production of not just antioxidant protection, but also detoxification precursors to glutathione, which is one of the things that helps you get rid of toxins and other things known to be relevant. And so it's very possible that they're overpriced, very possible that they're poorly formulated, but most of those things are not going to be totally meritless in how they're designed. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to ask this a little different way. So there's some people sort of in the hardcore evidence-based communities that just scoff at the whole concept of detoxification and yeah. think it's all just any mention of detox is immediately pseudoscience. It's quackery. <laughs> and the, the thinking there is sort of like, hey, we, we're, our bodies come built with a liver and kidneys. And, you know, I don't need any detox protocol because I've got a liver and kidneys. So yeah. what, what, what's your take I, on that? I, I call those people evidence-based internet trolls or EBITs. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that that's... Term, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and so an EBIT is, is basically a, a person who is so obsessed with the idea that they are policing what is evidence-based that through their own presuppositions and complete unawareness of the science behind the things that they criticize, they just label anything that doesn't fall into their bucket of what they know to be evidence-based mm -hmm. as not evidence-based and quackery. Mm -hmm. And these people almost universally don't know jack about like conventional medical understanding of how the liver functions right. and the dumbest, most like, I'm sorry to be like real polemical about this. No, please, but, please. But this is, they, they deserve this it. is, this is brain dead level of BS yeah. to say that, that you, the, the way you detox is to have a liver is like the dumbest thing that anyone has ever said about detoxification. <laughs> that is that is dumber than like on a practical level. It's not dumber than actually taking a bunch of olive oil and lemon juice and watching things come out of your poop. But intellectually, it's like dumber than that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at least someone like played around with something and looked at what came out the other end and made an idea <laughs> about it. Like at least they were open-minded, you know? Um, it, it might be totally meritless as a practical thing, but these people are completely closed minded and, and not to, they're not just closed-minded to a new idea. They're closed-minded to the existing known science about yeah. detoxification. Yeah. Like, it's just ridiculous level of BS. So uh, the, the idea that the reason that to say um, the way you detox is to have a liver, the reason that is stupid is that your liver um, doesn't detox by being a liver. Your <laughs> liver... <laughs> <laughs> your, your, and actually, so, someone in the comments to one of my posts made a very perfect analogy here, which, which, is, um, which is you never see any of these EBITs trolling the fitness people 
And of course, you, quite often they are the fitness people. You never see them trolling the fitness people saying, why are you taking all that protein? The best way to build muscle is to have a muscle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you never, but the, be you the, never best, the best way to bench press 500 pounds is to have muscles. Yeah, you, you never, and you never see these, these, these idiots trolling the bodybuilders saying, why are you in the gym? Why don't you just have a muscle, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so, um, and so the, the liver, uh, the liver's ability to detoxify, um, tox to detoxify toxins is dependent on number one, the hormetic stress input of toxins that tells the liver how much of the detoxifying enzymes it needs to produce. And then the raw materials that support those enzymes. So if you don't eat enough protein, you're not going to, you're not going to build muscle in the gym and you're not going to detoxify anything in your liver because you need protein to make glutathione, but not just glutathione, you need protein to make every enzyme in your body because every enzyme is made out of protein for the most part. There are some enzyme, obscure enzymes made from RNA, but all these proteins that help you detoxify, excuse me, all these enzymes that help you detoxify are proteins that are made out of the protein you eat. And so you need to eat enough protein. But not only that, but they, these enzymes have cofactors. So iron is a very... Um, very common cofactor in detoxification. If you don't have iron, you're not going to detoxify anything. If you're anemic, you're just looking at what's going on in your blood, but probably in your liver, your, your detoxification is sinking. Riboflavin is not as common, but there are key enzymes that are dependent on riboflavin. Um, but then there, you know, that process before I had described the process as in more simple terms, but phase one is, is oxidation. That's where iron and riboflavin are usually coming in. Phase two is called conjugation. What you do is you take this toxic molecule and you tag it with something that does two things. One is it helps you make it easier to excrete. The other thing is it neutralizes its toxicity. Those things that you conjugate it to are where many other nutrients come into play. So um, per, you know, one of the roles of protein is to help you make glutathione. Glutathione is one of those things. Sulfate is one of those things. You need to eat enough sulfur. A lot of the sulfur that you get comes from animal protein. A lot of the sulfur that you get comes from cruciferous vegetables. Um, but that sulfur input has to be there. Um, glycine is another one that you would use. And glycine, you can make some glycine, but you also get glycine from the diet. Really skin and bones, the sort of like eating nose to tail is the best way to improve your glycine status. Mm -hmm. And you can go on and on. There's different things that come into play um, in in, in that process. Uh, methylation is another um, part of phase two. And methylation is supported by folate, which is vitamin B9, vitamin B12, choline. A bunch of the B vitamins sort of are in the background supporting the methylation process. So, um, so there's, a, there's a diversity of things that are involved in phase two, but that really opens the door to a lot of nutritional effects. And then that, what we've been talking about is mostly detoxing organic molecules, which are large carbon-based molecules. There are also means by which you have to detoxify metals. And um, arsenic is detoxified by methylation. There are human studies showing that, that giving people nutrients that support methylation increases the amount of arsenic that they excrete in their urine. Like, mm. you know, human trial data showing this. Um, and I then don't need your B vitamins, I've got a little, uh, yeah. And then, uh, and then, um, and then more broadly, uh, one of the things that you do with heavy metals in general is you have this chelator that you make yourself called metallothionine. And if you have more mercury, for example, you make more metallothionine to bind it up, but your ability to respond to the heavy metal by making more metallothionine is completely a linear function of your zinc status across the range of deficiency through healthy amounts of zinc through super physiological amounts of zinc. So even if you're not zinc deficient, it's almost, I don't know of any human trials showing this, but based on the biochemistry, it's almost certainly the case that adding a zinc supplement would add to your ability to get rid of most heavy metals. Mm -hmm. And so when you, com when you combine that all together, what you're doing is showing that there are an incredible array of things that you can do to modify how well your liver gets rid of toxins. And so the idea that you detoxify by having a liver is like, um, you didn't say anything. You have a liver, so what are you gonna do with it? Hey there, this is Ari again. One more quick thing before you go. 
just make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Energy Blueprint, and also make sure to subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform, whether that's iTunes or Stitcher or anything else. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview, and I will see you again next week.